As a kid growing up, I thought my father was a superhero. He'd always appear suddenly and unexpectedly when I needed him the most. Whether it was snatching me from a riptide from the ocean or chasing off a group of delinquents that followed me home late one night after a jog, he was always there. And he always spoke up forcibly and publicly whenever he saw a grave injustice. He was, he is a hero. But even superheroes can stumble from time to time. And he personally began to stumble several years ago, quite literally. You see, his proud walk had turned into a shuffle. His hands, which were always steady and confident, they began to shake uncontrollably all the time. And my father's face, he always greeted people with a big smile, but now that had been replaced with a blank stare. Our worst fears that it was Parkinson's disease had come true. Now, if you haven't known a person who's a sufferer of Parkinson's, you discover a few things pretty quickly. First, the disease is cruel. It takes everything from your body, but it leaves your mind intact. My father lost the ability to work out, to button a shirt, even to call his grandkids on the phone. It's these things that made him him that suddenly disappeared. Secondly, developing the disease isn't just random chance. My father's father, my grandfather, had Parkinson's. My father's sister, my aunt, she has Parkinson's. It's in our genes. Some families are tall, some have big feet. We get Parkinson's. Lastly, we need more progress. The medicines that treat Parkinson's disease are just not enough. My dad has been treated with the exact same medicine that his father was treated with 25 years ago, which is the same medicine that was first developed in 1961, almost 60 years ago. There have been advances, to be assured. And this is not an indictment in any way of the brilliant and dedicated scientists working to create a breakthrough. But for my dad, for my aunt, maybe for me, we're running out of time to innovate. We are simply running out of time. So here's what we can do about creating the next big breakthrough. We need to start a citizen science movement dedicated to Parkinson's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases like it. We need to do it right now. Now you may be asking, what is a citizen science movement? Well, it's to bring together or an intersection of bringing leading scientific experts and the millions of brilliant problem solvers who bring creative insights from other worlds together. Now I know what you might be thinking. How can a smart but untrained layperson possibly know the first thing about Parkinson's disease? And can we really expect a generalist to discover a breakthrough that an accomplished and trained specialist would have missed? In short, yes. Because experts are humans first. And as humans, we can get stuck in an intellectual quagmire. When we confront a problem, our tendency is to rely on our past experience and apply the same logic, consult the same theories and paradigms that we've grown to know and trust. The truth is, if you're looking for a new hole, you can't find that new hole by simply digging the same one deeper. Breakthroughs require us to look at a situation or problem from an entirely new perspective. And that's where our citizen scientists come in. Because somewhere, someone has solved our problem before, but just in a completely different domain. And with the right problem formulation, the right briefing, we can unleash the power of all these problem solvers. Now, I know this may sound wild, but it works. Take Folded. Folded's a community of over 50,000 gamers and untrained citizen scientists who participate in protein folding. Now, predicting the right protein fold 
really matters because it can lead to a therapeutic breakthrough. And in fact, in 2011, the science community was absolutely stunned when this group of citizen scientists figured out the structure of a retrovirus enzyme, which ended up contributing to the development of a life-saving drug for HIV AIDS. Scientific experts in the field, they had puzzled over this problem for more than a decade. These citizen scientists, they cracked the problem in three weeks. Prize for Life, a not-for-profit foundation that's set to address ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, they also took this approach. Their researchers were trying to figure something out a little bit different. They were trying to identify a clear biomarker that would indicate whether the disease was being blocked in its progression. A group of citizen scientists were brought together and one of the top prize winners was neither a scientist nor was he a researcher. Turns out he was a dermatologist with no prior ALS background at all. He simply applied his medical training that was in a totally different area to this specific problem and got his breakthrough. And my personal favorite example, the NASA Space Poop Challenge. Yes, that is the real name. When NASA needed to build a spacesuit that allowed for astronauts to do, well, you know, their business in outer space, rather than leave it to their engineers and designers at NASA, they decided to invite thousands of citizen scientists to solve the so-called space poop challenge. The top winner and the breakthrough concept, it came from a flight surgeon from New England, not an, ast an astronaut, not an engineer, and his inspiration came from the world of minimally invasive surgical techniques, a completely adjacent or analogous area. And he said by borrowing the wisdom of that technique, it helped him find a breakthrough for building the next awesome spacesuit for NASA. You see, innovation is seeing what everyone is seeing, but thinking what no one has thought before. Citizen scientists can be that catalyst. They're not going to detract from our experts. In fact, on the contrary, they're going to magnify them. So here's what we need to do to make this happen. First, the highest priority and most complex problems need to be identified and shared with the broader citizen science problem solving communities. They're out there. Let's unleash them. Second, our leading experts, they need to start to convert those complex research challenges into briefs that could be more relatable and broadly understandable to the many. Third, we need to start enlisting millions of citizen scientists. They're out there. We need to find these generalists who are accomplished in a wide variety of domains, even if, and especially if, they're accomplished in areas entirely unrelated to neuroscience. And lastly, the scientific community must be comfortable with the notion that non-expert citizen scientists can and they will contribute to scientific breakthroughs. Because sometimes the greatest sparks come from other people's fires. We are running out of time to innovate. For my dad, for my aunt, maybe for me. And there are literally millions of superheroes waiting to don a cape and make a difference. Let's start a citizen science movement right now. Let's start the movement for Parkinson's disease and all other neurodegenerative conditions. We can do it. Let's start today. Thank you.